We can trust and believe. We can count on God's love. Because God is love. Whoa. Oh, 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 hey. Oh. We're on now? Why didn't you tell me? Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Lathrop First Christian Church's virtual trivia night. This is our December special, but we do this the last Tuesday of every month. I am Pastor Scott Archdeacon, and I am going to be your host for the rest of this time. I want to tell you about a change that we have made. Instead of 15 seconds for you to answer, I'm going to give you 20 seconds to answer. It was something that was suggested to me that perhaps we make the time a little bit longer. That way, people that are playing online together through the YouTube chat can go ahead and have a few extra seconds to stay on course. And so we're going to do that. But again, if you are at home and you're playing either by yourself or with your family at home, welcome. This is going to be a wonderful evening. We have four categories like we usually do. One category is going to be the I am statements. Another category is going to be Advent and Christmas. Another category is going to be, what book are you talking about? But the first category that we have is a special category. It's especially there for all the kids and everybody that doesn't like the fact that when I do trivia, I don't use multiple choice. And so without further ado, let's hit it. Welcome to Bible Trivia. This time we'll be asking questions about the Ten Commandments. The first question for 100 points. On which mountain did God give the Ten Commandments? Was it A. Carmel, B. Sinai, C. Ephraim, or D. Ararat? The answer is B. God gave the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. The next question for 300 points. To who did God give the Ten Commandments? Was it A. Aaron, B. Joshua, C. Moses, or D. Abraham? The answer is C. God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses. The next question for 1,734 points. On how many tablets of stone were the Ten Commandments written? Was it A, 1, B, 2, C, 3, or D, 4? The answer is B. The Ten Commandments were written on two tablets of stone. The next question for 700 points. What does commandment number one say? Is it A. You shall not make an idol. B. You shall not lie. C. You shall have no other gods before me. Or D. You shall not steal. The answer is C. The first commandment is, You shall have no other gods before me. The next question for infinity points. In what book of the Bible will you find the Ten Commandments? Is it A. Genesis, B. Exodus, C. Leviticus, or D. Numbers? The answer is B. You will find the Ten Commandments in the book of Exodus. The next question for 200 points. What did God use to write on the stone tablets? Was it A, a finger, B, a rock, C, 
flowing water, or D, the wind. The answer is A. God used a finger to write on the stone tablets. The next question for so many points. How long was Moses gone from the people as he talked to God on the mountain and received the Ten Commandments? Was it A, seven days, B, 40 days, C, three months, or D, seven months? The answer is B. Moses was gone for 40 days as he talked to God on the mountain and received the Ten Commandments. The next question for 600 points. In what were the Ten Commandments kept? Was it A. An altar? B. Stone? C. An ark? Or D. A pillar? The answer is C. The Ten Commandments were kept in the ark. The next question for a total of nine points. What does commandment number nine tell us? Is it A. To never hurt anyone? B. To love and respect your mom and dad? C. To always tell the truth? Or D. To love God more than you love anything else? The answer is C. The Ninth Commandment tells us to always tell the truth. Now for the last question, worth 1,000 points. Which commandment tells us to love and respect our mom and dad? Is it A, the First Commandment? B, the Third Commandment? C, the Fifth Commandment? Or D, the Seventh Commandment? The answer is C. The fifth commandment tells us to love and respect our mom and dad. Thanks for playing Bible Trivia. We hope you'll play again soon. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something about the Ten Commandments or it refreshed some stuff you'd already known. And cameraman, I really appreciate you giving me a heads up this time that we're on camera. Learn from that. Do more of that next time. All right, here we go. We get to the first category that we're going to do together. We're going to do the I am statements, and we're going to have 20 seconds to answer between each question. Here we go. Question number one. We have nine questions in each of these three categories. Question number one is this. Which of the four Gospels will you find Jesus using I am statements where he essentially says, I am blank? 20 seconds. What gospel will you find the I am statements? All right. Time's up. Maybe. Oh. There we go. Time's up now, sorry. That is found in the Gospel of John. That is the Gospel that the I Am statements are found. I'm using the church iPad for my timer and not my phone, and I had to figure out how to work the timer. Sorry about that. Question number two, here we go. How many I Am statements are there in the Gospel of John? How many? I am statements are there in the Gospel of John. Oh. 
All right, the answer is eight. There are eight I am statements in the Gospel of John. In fact, some people only count seven of them. There's one that they don't count. It's the first one we did, if you was here for our sermon series, where Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. Not everybody includes that because that's a different formula than what he uses for the other sevens where he says, I am blank. I am blank. Here it says, before Abraham was, I am. And so some people will say seven, but during our sermon series, I always said eight because I count that one. All right, next question. Here we go. When Jesus says, I am, he is using the covenantal name of God that is Yahweh. Yahweh is a Hebraic or Hebrew name, meaning I am what I am, or I am who I am, or I am who is. Now, since most of us, we don't read Hebrew, when Yahweh is translated into English, into English translations of the Bible, How can we tell the covenantal name Yahweh is used and not just some other name for God? What do translations use to signify the name Yahweh is being used instead of just God or something like that? All right, the answer is in most translations, it'll be Lord, and it will be in all capital letters. If you see Lord, and it's not all capital letters, if it's capital L, lowercase o-r-d, that's the Hebrew word Adonai. But if you see Lord, capital L-O-R-D, all capitals, that is how we know the covenantal name of God, Yahweh, is being used. Now, that's most translations. The other way that maybe we know pretty well is Jehovah. If your Bible says Jehovah, they are translating Yahweh into Jehovah. So those are kind of the two ways English translations differentiate Yahweh from the other names of God. All right, next question. Here we go. In John chapter 6, John chapter 6, Jesus references manna sent from heaven. And he references this in relation to one of the I am statements. What I am statement did Jesus use related to manna in the wilderness? When Jesus references manna, what I am statement is he using? All right, the answer is, I am the bread of life. Next question. When Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, who is Jesus speaking to? When Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, who is Jesus speaking to? All right, the answer is Martha. Martha and Martha's sister Mary isn't there yet. She's still at home. She hasn't made it out to see Jesus yet. And Lazarus is dead. He's in the grave. Jesus hasn't raised him from the dead yet, but he ultimately will. And so you have Mary, Martha, and Lazarus who are siblings, but only Martha is there when Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. All right, next question. Here we go. Jesus says, eight... I am statements. Like we talked about earlier, some people say seven, I say eight. Jesus says eight I am statements. 
And after he says one of them, Scripture tells us that the Jewish opposition picked up stones to throw at him. This clearly shows that they understood Jesus to be referencing himself as God. But what was it that Jesus said to make them pick up the stones? What I am statement was said that made this Jewish opposition pick up stones ready to stone him? All right, if you are only referencing the sermons that we did, you'd have to think back like 11 weeks ago to John chapter 8, verse 58, where Jesus says, Truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. And after that's when the Jewish opposition picked up stones to stone him because they understood he was making a direct reference to him being divine. All right, three questions left in this category. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. There's a rather famous psalm that is often used at funerals that references God as our shepherd. What psalm number is it? What psalm number is famous, often used at funerals, that references God as our shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's Psalm 23. Psalm 23. All right, here we go. Two of the I am statements that Jesus is used, that Jesus uses are pretty intertwined. He says, I am this, and then he says, I am that, and then he references the first I am and things like that. So it's intertwined. Now, for our sermons, we separated them out, but in the text, they're intertwined and they kind of go back and forth a little bit. What are those two different I am statements that Jesus intertwines together? All right. In John chapter 14, he says, I am the sheep gate, and I am the good shepherd. Those are the two. Last question in this category. In one of the I am statements, Jesus says, He is not just one thing, but He's three things. What three things does Jesus say He is in this one I am statement. I am and and All right. I am the way and the truth and the life. All right, next category, we're entering into Advent and Christmas. In fact, we're actually just exiting Advent and Christmas. <laughs> Pastor joke, sorry. But this category is Advent and Christmas. We just ended the Advent and Christmas season, and so I thought this would be a good way to reflect. The first four questions are more about church history and uh, traditional services and things like that. And then the last five are really about Bible trivia. So here we go. Each year leading up to Christmas, we celebrate Advent. What does Advent mean? As a church, we celebrate Advent leading up to Christmas, but what does Advent mean?
It means the coming of someone or the coming of something important. And so during Advent, we are awaiting the coming of Christ being born on Christmas morning. Okay, question number two. How many Sundays are there in the season of Advent? How many Sundays are there in the season of Advent? The answer is there's four Sundays during Advent. There are four Sundays during Advent leading up to Christmas. All right. Each Sunday has a different Christian theme as we await the coming of Christ. Now, there's a few different ways that they do these themes, but there's a very traditional way. It's the way we do it here. What are the four themes that lead up to Christmas, the four themes of Advent? The wrong one again. The four themes are hope, peace, joy, and love. All right, but on our Advent wreath, there is a fifth candle that does not get lit until Christmas Eve, or perhaps you're, Chris, you're depending on your tradition and your church, maybe it doesn't get lit until Christmas Day. But regardless, maybe Christmas Eve, maybe Christmas Day, there's a fifth candle that gets lit. What is the name of that candle? So we have the candle of hope, the candle of peace, the candle of joy, the candle of love. And we have the Christ candle. It's the white candle, usually in the middle of the Advent wreath. That is the Christ candle. All right, here we go. This is where we transition from this more church tradition kind of thing into Bible trivia again. Here we go. Who were the first visitors to come see the newborn king? Who were the first visitors to come see the newborn king? Shepherds. There were shepherds out in a field and the angels came to them telling them about the king being born. And they go, ooh, I want to go see that. And they go see that king. All right, here we go. Next question. Who is the ruler of the Roman Empire when Jesus is born? Who is the ruler of the Roman Empire when Jesus was born? Luke chapter 2, verse 1 tells us it was Caesar Augustus. Some people might have said Herod the Great, but he was actually the ruler of Judea, which is just a much smaller portion inside all of the Roman Empire. And so it wasn't Herod, it was Caesar Augustus. All right, now here we go. In Luke chapter 1, verse 27... It tells us that Joseph, Jesus' earthly dad, is a descendant of this famous Old Testament individual. And so in Luke chapter 1, verse 27, who does it say Joseph is a descendant of?
The answer is David, King David. Remember, that covenantal blessing goes from Abraham to his son Isaac to his son Jacob. Jacob's name gets changed to Israel. Israel has 12 sons. Through that, the blessing goes to Judah. Through the line of Judah, you have King David. And from the line of King David, you have Jesus the Christ. And so there in Luke chapter 1, verse 27, it attaches Joseph's lineage with that of King David. Well, we're speaking of Joseph, though, oftentimes overlooked in the Christmas narrative a lot of times. Joseph was living in this specific town before leaving to go get counted for the census. What town was that he was living in before going to go for the census? What was that town's name? The answer is Nazareth. Joseph left Nazareth to go get counted. So now here's the next question. What town was Jesus born in? What town was Jesus born in? The answer is, Jesus was born in the town of the house of bread. Who got it right? He was born in Bethlehem, and Bethlehem means house of bread. And so Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Last category for the night. I hope everybody's having a good time. I know I always enjoy this, sitting around with my family as we do this. This category is called, what book are you talking about? These questions are ones that maybe would help if you were one of those that really liked doing Bible drills, maybe, where you, someone called out a passage and you had to flip through and hurriedly find it as fast as you could. Or someone says something and they want you to tell, well, where would you find that in the Bible? Things like that. So this might be more challenging. That's why I saved it until the end. I didn't want to discourage you all too fast. <laughs> so here we go. What is the fifth book of the Bible called? What is the fifth book of the Bible called? The fifth book of the Bible is the book of Deuteronomy. And we are going to learn a lot more about Deuteronomy because starting on Sunday we are going to talk, start a sermon series where we go through the book of Deuteronomy. Next question, here we go. What is the fifth book of the New Testament called? Deuteronomy would be the fifth book of the Old Testament. So what's the fifth book of the New Testament called? All right, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. The book of Acts is the fifth book of the New Testament, the one immediately following the Gospels. All right, here we go. This Gospel was written by the same person who wrote the book of Acts. Which Gospel is it? This gospel was written by the same person who wrote the book of Acts. Which gospel is it? All 
All right, it's the, it's the Gospel of Luke. Luke and Acts are written by the same person. We've had that before. All right, here we go. The Apostle John, the Apostle John records the only ap, uh, apocalyptic book in the New Testament, a book about the end times. What book is that? The Apostle John records the only apocalyptic book in the New Testament. What is the name of that book? The answer is the book of Revelation. If you put an S at the end of Revelation to make it Revelations, you're wrong. There's no S. It's the book of Revelation. And if I was grading a paper, I'd be taking off points if you put an S at the end of that. All right, next question. Here we go. This is the first book of the major prophets in our Bible. If we look at the major and minor prophets, that, that encompasses the prophets. This is the very first book of that. So the very first major prophet or the very first book of prophecy. All right. That answer is Isaiah. Isaiah, Jeremiah, who wrote Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel... Hosea, Joel, Amos. See, I'm not doing my tune. Isaiah. Oh, I can't believe this. Isaiah, Jeremiah, who wrote Lamentations. Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos. Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi! All right, that got us through. That's all the books of prophecy right there in the Old Testament, major or minor. All right, next question. This book comes right after the book of Hebrews. This book comes right after the book of Hebrews. It's the book of James. The book of James. And in case you're wondering, it goes Philemon, Hebrews, and James. <laughs> My kids are at home probably getting a kick out of me using parts of the song for this. All right, here we go. Next question. We only got three left for tonight. Some people call this book the Song of Solomon. But others call the name of this book something else. What is the other name used for the book of Song of Solomon? All right, the answer is Song of Songs. So Song of Solomon, Song of Songs. And if you go a little bit further out, some people call it the Canticle of Canticles. I don't know what a canticle is. So I, usually people talk about the Song of Solomon or the Song of Psalms or the Song of Songs. All right, here we go. This is the only book in the entire Bible to tell the story of the rich man and Lazarus. What book tells this story? Sometimes the story is called the story of Dives and Lazarus, or the rich man, because Dives is Latin for rich man.
Dives and Lazarus is found in the Gospel of Luke and only in the Gospel of Luke. Last question here. Last question here. This book comes right before the book of Jude. This book comes right before the book of Jude. This book comes right before the book of Jude. First Peter, second Peter, first John, second John, and third John. Jude, Revelation. Hey, third John comes right before the book of Jude. What, what is that? I'm not doing the whole song for the entire book of the Bible. Really? You think somebody wants to hear me try to do that? This is going to be like when I tried to do the Ten Commandments and couldn't get number nine. All right, we'll try. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, who wrote Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, and James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John, Jude, Revelation. That is your 66 books of the Bible. That concludes Bible trivia. I hope you all had a wonderful evening. I know 